Good morning. Welcome to Pete's Garage. Today, I'm going to work on the Suburban a little bit more. I'm going to remove the speedometer cable, which I'll have to take the dash part for. I need to do that anyway because I bought a whole set of gauges from JEGS, and uh, I'm going to redo my, my dash. I changed my direction a little bit. It happens. And uh, punch the wires through the firewall and build the OBD2 port. By the end of today, if I could turn the key on and turn the scanner on and read the computer, I would be very happy. So we'll see what happens. So what is the most boring, tedious part of any build? I'll show you. Wiring. Unfortunately, in my eagerness to uh, clear clutter from behind the dash, I cut this connector out before I fully realized that I needed a bunch of circuits off it. Specifically, I need the circuits for the high beam light, I need circuits for the turn signals, and I need the brake signal circuit. So, nothing that can't be recovered from but uh, I want to identify my circuits. So what we've got here is, this is number one, which corresponds to that point right there on the circuit diagram. Number one, low, that's circuit 11, which goes right to the high beam, right? So uh, we're going to go to circuit pin four. So let's separate these out a little bit. That's one. And surprise, surprise, it's pink wire. And that goes to the voltmeter. So we'll just run a pink wire to the voltmeter and that'll tell us what the volts are in the car. No surprise there. With the new gauge set that I bought, I'm going to put the gauges into this front bezel itself, right? So the gauges are actually going to sit inside there and inside here, 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 and here. This is the circuit panel for this, right? And this is how it plugged in. And probably more like that. But anyways, it doesn't matter. That was how that worked, and that... went on the back of this cluster assembly like this and everything plugged in and all the gauges plugged in. My new gauges are going to work radically differently. I'm not going to be able to use this cover. I'm probably not going to be able to use this darkener and I'll have to modify a bunch of this to get the gauges to fit but I'll have them work together because this is how everything's going to to be solid and then I can run all my wiring in various places but that's how I'm going to modify this and it's going to wind up going like that right yeah like that So that's where I'm at with that. And other than that, I mean, now I'm just gonna kind of get to it and start splicing wires again and marking everything that I need to mark from, hold on. All right, so you can see that's where I cut all the wires in my enthusiasm to get all the garbage out of here. But obviously I need more than that. And uh, that's how that's going to work. All right. Thank <laughs> you.
Alright, moment of truth. Keys on. Dongle. Known good. Tools. Torque Pro. Real time information. Checking model ECU. Okay, look at that. Caution, icy conditions. Uh, O2 sensors are incomplete. Um, I don't really care about emissions readiness, but this tells you that the computer is working. The reason why the O2 sensors are incomplete is because they're not actually plugged in. So we got RPMs are zero. It works. The computer's up. Let's take a look at fault codes. The throttle control is not connected, and so, with that throttle position sensor, tap for multiple descriptions, powertrain, uh, throttle control motor. So, the it can't. The throttle control motor can't do anything because the throttle position is not uh, plugged in. But it's up. It's running. Everything's good. Ah, off the key. Starter works. All right. Oh my God, it's gonna start.